Welcome to Mega Dead Gaming, and this review is going to be on Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, developed by BioWare, published by LucasArts, released for Xbox and PC in 2003, with Mac OS version coming in 2004, iOS in 2013, and Android in 2014. It's a single player role playing game. The story takes place approximately 4,000 years before the rise of the Galactic Empire. Darth Malak, former Jedi Darth Lord of the Sith, and Dark Revan's former apprentice, has unleashed a Sith armada against the Republic. Malak's aggression has left the Jedi scattered and vulnerable. Many Jedi Knights have fallen in battle, and others have sworn allegiance to Malak. The game opens with the player's character. The character can choose a face, and be male or female and you wake aboard the public ship Endar Spire, which is under attack. So, let's go ahead and demonstrate some of the gameplay here. Alright, so here's where you choose your character. You have female soldier, scout, and scoundrel. Yeah, male soldier, scout, and scoundrel. So basically you're a rogue, explorer, and you're a fighter. Let's pick one. Then you have a variety of variety of attributes, by a variety of portraits. You have strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Each of these affects a different aspect. It can also affect the. It definitely affects how you progress in the game. Even though it does have a bit of a linear story, it will make a difference how you approach certain situations. You have skills, computer use, demolition, stealth, awareness, persuade, repair, security, treat injury. And you can only level these up so much to start. And that is based on your certain attributes. Like persuade is obviously based on charisma, repair is based on intelligence, security is wisdom, etc. Let's put some random stuff in there. It's obviously not a good character. Build. Pick your name, and then you play. A 2003 game, the graphics are a bit dated, and as are the cutscenes, but they are clear enough and well constructed enough where you can tell what's going on. Might be a bit polygonal, as you can see with this one. So, let's go ahead and discuss some other aspects of the game. We've been ambushed by as far as the story and plot, it is a well-developed story, especially if you're a fan of Star Wars. Definitely adds to the lore, and many people would argue that the story in this game is better than many of the later movie releases. And the soundtrack is similarly well-composed, fitting for the situation and just good music in general. And the sound adds to the environment as well. It does make use of the Odyssey game engine, which is a Bioware engine that's been used in a variety of settings. The gameplay itself is similar to Dragon Age Origin and other Bioware titles, where it's possible combat where you can decide to make certain moves and then it, it plays out 
so, so it's, it's a bit, it's a, it's a take, it's a take on, on turn-based turn -based combat. combat. You're not actually, not actually shooting. shooting. Although you do Although have, you have certain, certain actions you can take, take during combat. combat. It's, not it's not purely, purely the, the old, old style, style of turn base where it's you select something and a dice rolls and then you see an animation. It's a bit more complex than that. So the game itself actually plays out quite well. The attacks do slow down the game a bit, but the strategic elements to battle actually adds to the immersion. It might not be fast paced like Jedi Outcast is, but it also gives you the chance to stop and be more strategic in each of your battles. You do have a do have a karma meter of sorts from the light to the dark side, which will affect how you play the game and how you're received by certain people. You can play this game as somebody who's essentially morally bankrupt, all the way to somebody that's such a so far on the good side that it's unrealistic. You also have companions that join along the way, could potentially join. And you'll find that certain ones, certain ones will have certain abilities that they're better at. And it's important that you actually see which ones you need in which situations. Because failing to have a certain companion might lock you out of a certain area if you don't have the skill set at hand as well. So what you have here is a classic RPG. And one of the, not only one of the best Bioware titles, but one of the best RPGs and best Star Wars games, period. I'd argue that the gameplay of Jedi Outcast is better than the gameplay of this game, more so than the story of this game is better than the story of Jedi Outcast. And both have strong stories. I prefer Jedi Outcast, but that's just more of a matter of a personal taste. Both games are necessary for the Star Wars fan to pick up. Although, it might seem a somewhat... You have a variety of dialogue options. At the beginning, it won't matter as much. You swore an oath to protect. I know she may not have. I heard with people with. I know you're a scout and not a soldier. But that See, they recognize that as a scout, not a soldier. You can choose this one. Don't be stupid. You won't stand a chance against the Sith bike. So hurry up and grab your. You can move them to move. To you can. In the beginning, it doesn't really make much of a difference. And throughout the game, it doesn't make a lot of difference. Movement is fluid. And it shows you where stuff is in the environment without getting in the way too much. So anyway, I don't want to spoil any of the game for anybody. This is a game that's highly recommended. If you enjoy Bioware titles, you've probably already played this one. Come on, we have to hurry. Put your if you enjoy Star Wars, even if this might not be your genre of choice, there's enough story here to make up for any any personal taste that might not be in line with this game. And even if you're like me and are a bit ambivalent towards the Star Wars universe, you just enjoy well-constructed stories and RPGs. You don't necessarily have to be a Star Wars fan to be like, because this is a good game to enjoy yourself. So, there's also Variety. There's a huge fan base for this game that helps maintain certain aspects of the game. Helps with fan patches, mods, and other things for the game. It is available. It is available from Steam. And if you want to pick up a copy from Steam, on Steam it is available for. Getting that price really quick. Oh yeah, 87% very positive.
87 percent of view reviews of 12,000 are very positive. Let's go ahead and transition back to my title scene. Use the equip screen to equip the armor and weapons from your inventory. You can act. All right, picking this up on Steam will set you back 9.99, which is a steal for this game. And actually, it looks like they have all the. A complete a set, of, set Star of Star Wars, Wars games on here, including some. Let's see, what is this? The whole Dark Forces and Jedi Knight series. You have a whole bundle of Star Wars games for $225, which, depending how many games are in that, even it's not every single one. Just the ones I'm seeing listed. Jedi Outcast, Jedi Academy, Jedi Knight with the add-on Dark Forces, Knights of the Old Republic, Starfighter, Republic Commando, Battlefront 2. $225 really wouldn't be a bad deal for that much many Star Wars games, but $9.99, you can pick this up on Steam. It's a steal at that price. Also $9.99 on GOG. It's really a game you shouldn't miss. Like I said, it's one of the best RPGs and best Star Wars and best Bioware titles out there. So I hope you enjoyed the review. Please like, subscribe, and have a great day.